Recording in progress. Great. Um, good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting. Um, would everyone please join me in rising for the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, good evening to everyone. Um, to my left is our town administrator, Rebecca Oldham, and to my right is select member Jason Naves. After him is Mark Parento, and at the end is Ed Watson, and Dan McDonald is not here tonight. So typically we open with um, public comment, and I'm understanding the town clerk would like to have a moment with the public comment about an open seat. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to mention um, when we put out the information for this year's local election, we did not have a planning board seat on that on the ballot for this year, but we've had a resignation, and so there's now one seat open for the planning board, which will expire in 26. So if anyone would like to take out papers, we would love to have you come down and run for the planning board. So I just wanted to make sure it was out there because everything else has been posted prior to, and it didn't have that information on the planning board. So this is a great way to get it out to everybody in town. So thank you. Um, if you could just, sure. you take out papers now. When did you? When would someone have to have them back by? The last day to take out papers is the 14th, and they have to return them by March 18th. Which okay, is so last day to take out the papers is March 14th. You need 34 signatures to get on the ballot, right? Yeah, correct. And then you have to return them by the 18th, March 18th. Okay, At five o'clock. So if we have anybody out there who wants to be a planning board member, we sure would welcome you to take out papers and we'll help you get signatures. <laughs> the whole board will. And just to prevent any, <laughs> um, just in case, if the town hall is open till 7 o'clock, which we are on Monday nights, but the deadline is 5 o'clock. So on March 18th, the deadline is 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Right, okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you, you for letting us know. And um, we also have a, a public comment from Mike Dempsey. Thank you, uh, Mike Dempsey for the Groveland Conservation Commission. So um, I just wanted to uh, make a couple of statements about some 
information that was given to the board uh, on February 12th uh, under public comments that were either incorrect or misleading. So I wanted to present the correct facts uh, tonight. So the first uh, statement uh, regarding um, access to 150 Center Street. So it was stated that access to the town-owned 150 Center Street was not needed sometime in the future since you could access it through town-owned 46 Washington Street, but this is incorrect. Um, as Washington Street does not abut 150 Center Street and there is no access there. So I'll give you this map for the record that shows that fact there, that there is no access from 46 Washington Street. Uh, the second item is regarding housing on the parcel known as 114 Center Street slash 62 Washington Street being sold by the church. So it was stated that housing is not allowed by EPA on the former Superfund parcel and therefore it is not worth the town purchasing it. This is misleading. Only a small portion of that parcel is restricted for housing. However, the EPA Superfund Redevelopment Initiative Program works with towns like Groveland to redevelop sites into <coughs> commercial and municipal uses such as community centers, parks, and senior housing. So again, I've included some examples for the board. Uh, one is in Walpole where they put it to great municipal use. Another one is um, out in uh, Florida near Jacksonville where they actually put, uh, allowed uh, community garden, apar apartment complexes, daycare center, and senior housing. The third item was development at 150 Center Street. So it was stated that there will not be development at 150 Center Street, so we don't need to be concerned about alternate access to the site. This is incorrect. Uh, a master plan for 150 Center Street development was paid for by the state, a state grant and consultants presented the plan to this board. Um, no decisions obviously have been made yet, but it is likely that some type of development may occur there which may need alternative access to the site. The fourth item is the sale of 114 Center Street, 62 Washington Street parcel that the church currently owns. It was stated at the meeting on February 12th that concerning the sale of 114 Center Street parcel that the archdiocese doesn't even know what it is selling. This is incorrect. The archdiocese has hired a realtor, sell, a realtor to sell the property. It has been advertised and bids are due in March. So I've, I will give you for the record the realtor's um, brochure on the property and they even have a map of exactly where the property is located. And finally, uh, what I consider the most egregious incorrect fact was talking about habitat mitigation. So it was stated that the town gave away eight acres of land that was part of 150 Center Street for turtle habitat. This is misleading and incorrect. The town built our much loved community trail through habitat. When that's done, the state wants you to make up for that loss of habitat, which is what was done by setting aside some acreage at 150 Center Street to compensate for that loss. We did not give land away. We still own it, and we can use it for passive recreation. Even our own water department put a sewer line through the middle of it last year. So certainly we did not give away eight acres. So thank you for this opportunity to clear up 
the <coughs> misconceptions and uh, I'll ask that this be put into the record. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Okay. And um, if, if the board wants this in a future agenda, that's when we can discuss because we don't discuss the public comment. Okay. So we're moving on along the agenda. <coughs> Next on the agenda is um, discussion possible vote. Approve the field use permit for the use of the Pines Recreation Area Utility Fields. One and two by the Pentucket Youth Football. Scott Chicarello. Chicarello, thank you so much. Chicarello, for August 15th, 2024 through November 15th, 2024. And Scott is present and here for questions. If you have no questions, you can um, make a motion to approve the permit. I'll make a motion to approve the field use permit for the use of the Pines Recreation Area Utility Field 1 and 2 by Pentucket Youth Football for August 15th through November 15th, 2024. I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? Yes. Question. Uh, doesn't indicate the times on, on the... Uh, the times will be uh, from 5 p.m. till 7 p.m., Monday through Friday. It won't be dark. Uh, at the end of the season, we have the lights that come oh, down Oh, you have there. lights down there. Yes, yeah, so we rent okay. the lights. We bring them down, and we'll put uh, four of them down in <laughs> the field. How are you going to see the football? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Any further questions? No, no. just uh, I just uh, as usual, just make sure the kids pick up their trash after. And for years, we've always find stuff out in the middle of yeah, the field. That's always a big talking so. point at the beginning of every practice pretty much throughout the season. Uh, last year was great. We actually had an extra trash barrel down there yep. uh, to help mitigate some of that. Yep. Uh, yep. Also, and I talked to Rebecca, we are planning on, we've appropriated funds last year and this year we're going to have the pine seeded again on our own dime uh, because we do tear up that field. I spent the big utility field on the end. Uh, so Grove and Landscaping, Mark McCabe will come down and seed the field. Uh, at our expense. Thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you. Also, one other last thing for me. Um, this is my last year on the board of directors for Pentucket Youth Football Field Director. Uh, so I just want to thank Rebecca. I've been working with you for the last couple of years. I really appreciate everything and uh, this board and the previous boards that I've been dealing with. So thank you so much for putting the effort into these boys and these kids. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Um, next, we have approved the special event permit for the use of Elm Square by the Alzheimer's Association. Um, Megan Stephen or Stephen from Candid Sports for June 1st, 2024, for the ride to end ALZ Alzheimer's New England from 8 a.m. to 2:30 p.m. I'll make a motion to approve special event permit for the use of Elm Square by. The All Timers Association on June 1st, 2024, uh, from 8 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. I'll second that. Any further discussion? There being none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Um, next is to approve the property use permit for the Daisy Girl Scout Troop <coughs> to use the Little Red Schoolhouse lawn for a cookie sale on March 10th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. I'll make a motion to approve the use permit for Daisy School, Daisy Girl Scout Troop to use a little red schoolhouse lawn for the cookie sale on March 10th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. I'll second that. Any further discussion? There being none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Next, the Greater Ainsbury Public Health Excellence Group Intermunicipal Agreement. Um, and I believe we have the Chairman of the Board of Health is here to talk to us about this. David Greenbaum. Good evening. Um, I believe that we were here in, I think it was December, to discuss this grant opportunity. Uh, the city of Amesbury has received this public health grant uh, from the Mass Department of Public Health. Um, I believe, as I expressed then, that this is not a funding opportunity, but it's an opportunity to get services through the grant through Amesbury. Um, there was some question at the time about the intermunicipal agreement. Uh, I believe that Rebecca has gotten approval through the town council that this there is no concerns or um, 
comments on the intermunicipal agreement. So the question is now is the selectmen going to sign the agreement uh, as requested as, in, as part of the grant. So if anybody has any questions on the agreement or the grant in and of itself, I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, so. So I'll, I'll just go ahead. I know that, um, and I'm glad the town council has read through the whole thing and they think it's all right. That's, that was part of our concern was um, there seemed to be um, some parts of it that suggested like that if we pulled, decided to end it, to pull out, that we might still owe money for something. And I thought, how would we know that we owe money for something? There, there isn't going to be any owing of money because you're, okay. not to, you're not going to get any money, so there's not going to be any money to owe. <laughs> if, right. in, if there's some opportunity or some possibility that the grant ended for some reason, the only community that would have to pay back money uh, if there was any money left would be Amesbury because they signed the contract with the Commonwealth. Um, okay. So if, or if for some reason at the end of the fiscal year, if they had money that wasn't spent as part of that fiscal year, they would have to return those funds at the end of the fiscal year. But uh, other than that, no community other than the grantee that, that has signed the contract with the Commonwealth is responsible for any funds. So um, from Groveland's side of the fence, what services do you think we might um, benefit from this type of agreement? So, you know, I hold the same grant in Salem. Um, right. We've hired numerous staff to work on a regional level. We've hired an inspector. We've hired a public health nurse. We've hired a community health worker. Um, so those are the types of services. So if you needed additional help with nursing services or inspectional services, uh, I, would, I would anticipate that you could request those services through the grant to get that, that type of service. So do you envision that this is a step towards regionalizing? Like, like we share... Um, a health agent, right? Our health agent isn't, you're in the room, right? Uh, we don't I, share you with anybody right now? No, I work for the town of Grove. Oh, just the town of Grove. Okay, so didn't we at one point share the health agent with somebody? No? My misunderstanding. Uh, uh, my understanding is the health agent has always worked independently you. for the community and that they work for other communities to make up whatever hours they need to okay, make so, up for their salary. So but. this, though, would be a regional. <clears throat> Health it's a regional agent. grant, but every community maintains their autonomy. So each Board of Health maintains their autonomy to act in and of itself. Um, there is no expectation that the, the communities would regionalize. The, that's not part of the, the idea. The idea is to provide cross-border um, collaboration. Um, you know, for instance, we're working on sun safety in our, in our group. We, we're working on body art regulations in our group. Uh, but our group has not given up their autonomy to maintain individual boards of health, individual okay. municipality autonomy, or anything of that nature. So if our, if our health agent was on vacation, would this provide for coverage? Yes. Okay. And if our health agent had too many inspections? Would this be something you could call up and get additional coverage? That's the way I envision it. Now, I'm not in the conversations with this group, but that's the, that's the way I envision it, yes. Okay, so we wouldn't hire an additional no. person in our town, but no. we could go to the group for additional services. Correct. Okay. As could any of the other communities within the, the coalition of this group. Eight, eight communities, Rosemary? Eight communities. Eight communities. There are eight other. Why don't you use this microphone if you want? That'd be great. So there are eight. There are eight other cities in town. So city of Newburyport, um, city of Amesbury, uh, Newbury, Rowley, um, Georgetown, Groveland. I'm missing one. Merrimack. Merrimack. Yeah. Um, so all of those are part of this. Coalition. So the other towns have already submitted their IMAs. Um, Groveland happens to be one of the ones that has not submitted that information oh, yet. Yes. Um, so we're waiting. Um, this whole grant is um, due to the fact of back in when we had COVID, um, the state realized that cities and towns are vastly underfunded uh, for the boards of health. And so in order to bring the boards of health up to an even playing field, this grant was implemented so that everybody can then benefit from it and they can then have whatever services that particular city or town is lacking or maybe in order to make your city or town a little bit uh, better. 
that's what this grant is providing okay so so as we go along like you'll be our representative to them is that I am right now so yeah, I attend their meetings okay. um, and so um, I gather the information then review it with the board um, okay. to tell them what is happening but yes so I er, there's one person you can have more than <clears throat> one but typically it's just one person that's the representative to attend these meetings and right now we're not looking for any services but we want to join the coalition correct because there's always there's things that could be that we could um, get done here that I'm only 17 hours a week so I don't have time to get through some stuff that maybe might be beneficial for the town like um, maybe next year we could do flu clinics because we could have you know a, if our public health nurse doesn't have time we could have another public health nurse come in to do flu clinics here or blood pressure clinics or other information like that okay well turn it down to Ed do you have any questions What's that? do you have any questions about the coalition uh, no mark no Jason no I don't have any questions I really think it's a great idea okay so do you want to go ahead and make the motion for us to what do you have wording for this motion that has to be specific or um, is it kind of loosely I, 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 I don't know that it necessarily needs we a motion. We have to sign. I, well, I think usually we vote and then sign. Okay. Yeah. We typically uh, vote on everything. <laughs> it's a uh, thing. <laughs> you know, I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth, but <laughs> just that, that the, the board, uh, you know, is in favor of signing on to the intermunicipal agreement for the Amesbury uh, Public Health Coalition, I think. Okay. I'll make a motion that the board signs on to the Greater Amesbury Public Health Excellence Group into Municipal Agreement uh, to participate in the Shared Services Grant. I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? There be none. All in favor? It's yep. unanimous. We will sign. Are you able to sign that tonight? Sure. Do you have the agreement with you, or can I give you a copy of the agreement to sign? Do you have it? She has a copy we can sign. He wants the signature right now. Yeah, I'd like to give it to the, to the office so that we can get it over to them as soon as possible. Do we have it in here? Oh, okay. Well, how do I know it's the legitimate one? <laughs> they all switch around. <laughs> we all sign this? No, just you. Oh, okay. Oh, hanging me out to dry. <laughs> now I know why Dan's not here. Okay, I got this. No. Well, there's a lot. Of, oh, I get you. Here's what I'm going to do. Never place chair. I'm not chair. And say, is it 26? Yeah. It's a done deal. Sealed the deal. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for coming by. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for Thank helping you. us out on it. Okay. Um, next Thank is the both. Shanahan Field discussion. I, and I asked for this? Parking. Yeah, but I thought we discussed at the last meeting to reach out to the soccer people to see about locking the gate. And yeah, we were going to reach out to them and Rennie and the police chief. And yeah. Get a that was it. That's all we can do right now, right? Oh, I'm sorry. An agenda item. We invited the league that were here to speak about their scheduling and their staggers. Are they um, here? They're here in the audience. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi. Leagues. <laughs> I didn't know you were leagues. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. And would you like to come up to each, grab a mic and state your name and which leagues you are? Thank you for coming in. I didn't realize that. I kept you waiting there. My name is Benjamin Van Dyne. I'm president of Groveland Youth Soccer. Okay. Steve Crowder, I'm on Pentucket Youth Soccer Board. Okay, and so you're aware that, that there's a parking, we have a shortage of parking um, with both fields and youth, so we were trying to figure out ways to encourage cars to park not on the sidewalk, yep. um, so not impeding the, pub, the public sidewalk, but um, do you have any other ideas? I mean, until we put a parking lot in formally, we're kind of stuck with what we've got available. Yep. 
um, I watched a little bit of that meeting and um, just a, one concern I had was it was suggested to lock the gate. The side gate, yeah. yeah. It just seemed like more cars were parking there than using the actual parking lot. Yeah, I don't know about that, but I feel like that's probably not the appropriate way to deal with this. It might okay. be a safety issue. Um, that's a hundreds of feet, that fence, so if yeah. people are trying to exit, they have to, they'd go have to run around. That doesn't seem safe, especially with little children. Okay, so what do you think you could do to advise? I mean, I, I kind of understand a little bit why people are pulling up off the road onto the sidewalk, because they don't want their little children to get out into the road. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so and, then, yeah. hence the sidewalk parking lot. Yeah. Um, and, and so we're kind of at a loss as to what to do. With the, the, the fields get great use. They look gorgeous, you know. Um, you maintain them well, no question about that. Um, what can, is there anything we can do to help you out um, with the parking to make sure that, right now they don't ticket the cars, right. you know. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a challenge, you know, so from, from the two leagues, right, for the three towns that we represent here. Um, we send out emails beginning during the season, as you know, for reminders, but it limits us with our guests when they come in. We can't manage that, so that's, I understand that's a challenge. You know, yeah. we, there's no way for us to communicate to, you know, XYZ town, right, that you can't park on the sidewalk. So I don't know, I mean, aside from, from signage, you know, that would be the only way to say, you know, please no parking on the, on the sidewalk. Um, until the parking lots, uh, if, you know, any proposed parking lot was, would to be built, would be that's it. Other than, you would, know, do you feel there's a need for a good sized parking lot? Yes. Okay, absolutely. well, it'd be helpful to to advocate for that because we tried to bring that f through the town meeting and it didn't make it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, that's why we're I stuck. Think that's such a great idea. I saw the plans and um, very much needed. Uh, Soccer just grows every single year, the participation. So. You know those fields are really a valuable asset and it's nice to have nice fields for other towns to come to and see and um you know we do send out emails on a regular basis about parking and we'll continue to do that and we'll we can increase those this year um do it even more to help out okay. the best we can um you know other than you know the signage i think just encouraging people to park you know in the cul-de-sac and that area first um, is that the only area we have for parking? Are they allowed behind that little house? Is that our parking still or not? Um, so it is our, our property, but it abuts a private right of way. So we can allow people to park there or we can? We can, but the issue is I believe that what I've heard from neighbors is that people will block the access to the back of the lot. But I do receive confirmation that the um, civil issue about the fence has been resolved and that they will be putting a right of way um, where the right of way should be. So it will not be as much of an issue in terms of access because it will be clearly delineated that that's a driveway. Um, but now it's just confusing because I think sometimes people even think that the Knox building is a public restroom. And so <laughs> it's not clearly delineated. <laughs> parking lot so yeah. <laughs> I think that the, the whole plan is to to formally delineate this is a house this is a driveway this is access to park so yes you can park but it gets a little bit um, okay. confusing I mean even a, maybe a drawing a map <laughs> we could email out like a PDF or something that that might be helpful we can do that okay so we can do that <laughs> there's things we can do all right so until we get a parking lot Thank you for helping with this. Yeah, and anything we can do to help support the parking lot, yep. let us okay. know. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank Any you. questions from Yes, Ed, go ahead. What time are you done uh, with soccer? Uh, at, at, at in the evening. Uh, dark usually with practice nights. On the weekends, three o'clock. Three o'clock. Well in the future do you do you have plans to uh, light those fields? Not currently. No, yeah, you can't play soccer in the dock. Correct. So what, what I'm getting at is uh, there's uh, part of the funds is for uh, lights in the parking lot. And I, I, just, I just think that that's kind of absurd because they don't play soccer in the dock. Last year, 
the I think it was around uh, half a million dollars that they were looking to uh, uh, do for redo the parking lot. Well, then it got cut down some. I think it was uh, they took out the lights. They took they took out the uh, cutting of the trees. But now they're up to eight hundred and eighty something thousand. It's up over three hundred thousand dollars more. I, I have no problem with the with the uh, parking lot, but the cost is ridiculous. Eight hundred and eighty, I think it's eight hundred eighty-seven or eight hundred seventy-eight thousand. Uh, why? And, and I know it's got nothing to do with you guys, but it's it's gone up over three hundred thousand dollars more in a year for uh, for the design of the parking lot. I I really don't think you need lights there. Is it going to be a municipal lot? I mean, I. I would think it's not just. I haven't seen any of the a new municipal lot for what? Plans for parking. For for what? Snow. I don't know. <laughs> for for what? For snow emergencies. I don't know. <laughs> so I guess I, know. I think that's from our perspective. What right? Yeah. You don't we need build lights. Is what you said. Yeah, we don't need lights, but we support know. the parking lot. But what what would it ultimately be allowed yeah. to be used for? Yeah. yeah. Right. Who is who is allowed to park there? So right. there's the there's the rail trail that's not too far from there, okay. right? So like it, on the weekends. There's a parking lot, and who who's allowed to park there? You know, well, that's that's the gray area that from. If you our go by the rail trail, if you go by the rail trail across from the old SD Lumber next to the park of fence, yep. they're they're parking on the side of the road. Right. What to me what would be, uh, what would make more sense is some kind of a parking area at the rail trail. People are not going to park at the soccer field, and walk down, even though they're there for exercise. Uh, yeah, and for, from our perspective, we're, we're advocating for the soccer field right, right now. So I right. think for soccer, you know, between the, the, the complaints or the requests from the neighbors that I rece have received over the years, um, the, the limitation of just the physical land, the property, the streets that are there, right. a, a parking lot would be beneficial to ease the parking constraints that we have. Okay. Um, I understand the cost and the concern from, yeah. from soccer's current stand plan we don't need lights we don't play games at night yeah. okay. we end at dusk you know as the see as the time yeah. and season change you know that's our that's our cutoff is dusk right. yeah um, but also as a citizen i mean that's going to be a municipal lot it's not going to be the soccer right. groups parking lot so right so we haven't seen the, any of the latest proposals on it yeah. so we'd have to wait for it to come before us again right is that so is it coming forward this year again uh, the CPC just approved the application, so it okay, will Okay, so that will be coming to us. The town meeting. And then we'll see it. And, and it may be a safety thing that perhaps a parking lot on the back side of that field, the police perhaps don't want that dark at night. I don't know. I'd have to wait till it comes to us to find out. Yeah. I imagine that would be the same as the Pines. Right. It's Is all about visibility for the police and safety. Okay. But thank you for coming by and talking to us. And yeah. we do really appreciate um, that you keep the field looking so great and picked up. And anything you can do to help with the parking until we get a lot in there would be appreciated. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Great. Right. Thank you. Okay, have you. a nice night. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so, oh, the audit report is next. Dun, da, dun, da. No. <laughs> it's not very thick, which is a good thing. Did everybody get a copy of the audit report? I seem to be the only one with that out. I got mine on my computer again. Oh, okay. Hello. You could you could join them at the table, Alan, if you <laughs> come on. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> He's on the front row. You sit in the front. <laughs> Do you need another seat for the front row? What's that? Or do you need another seat there? Uh, I think it should be okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. She seat. wants to sit in the background. <laughs> well, oh, Ellen you. has preferred to sit where she is. She's chosen her seat. Okay. So whenever you get ready, if you could just introduce yourselves, that sure. would be great. Thank you. Testing, testing. It's right. I don't know if this is on. It's testing. Good. If it says green, it's on. Right. So, uh, my name is Frank Ceretti. I'm a partner with uh, Markham Accountants and Advisors. We were formerly Powers and Sullivan up until about a month ago when we merged with Markham. 
Okay. And so I uh, have been with Powers and Sullivan for about 28 years, a little over 28 years, and my focus has been auditing cities, towns, and other local governments within Massachusetts. So this is really you know, all I've done since I've been out of college, and um, looking forward to working with the town. I'm um, relatively local across the river. I'm from Merrimack, so I'm very familiar with the area up here and uh, kind of the. Uh, politics and different things going on up in this area, so uh, I kind of bring that to the table too. Um, and then with me is Laura, who I think you want to know. I think you yep. already know. Hello. Yeah. Um, so I'd just like to start off, if it's okay, uh, just thanking the town administrator, the town accountant, the treasurer, collegi treasurer collector uh, for all the cooperation and assistance that we received during the course of the audit. There's a, a lot of information that we need to be able to get the audit done in a, an efficient manner. And uh, we utilize a secure portal to transfer files back and forth. That has become much more prevalent in this industry since COVID and you know, people, a lot of things started to become uh, remote. And so that is a tool that is, is really a great tool that uh, really got adopted during that time. So we're really kind of pushing for that. It, it keeps your data more safe. It makes it uh, more accessible to us. It makes it more accessible to your team too. I think it helps you know, both of us on both ends. Um, but as far as the audit goes, we uh, complete the audit in two different phases. Uh, the, the first phase is what we consider to be the uh, preliminary work. And we usually come out in the spring, maybe early summer, to start doing that preliminary work. And that involves uh, taking a look at your internal controls, testing internal controls and transactions. We pulled transactions. Uh, we're also uh, auditing different things that we can audit at that time, uh, since it is usually before year end. Uh, we're focusing on things like the budget, uh, debt, uh, your pension, and your other post-employment benefits liability. So we're really trying to do as much as we can in that preliminary phase to just kind of get a head start on the year end work. and. Um, it just helps us when we come to year end to be able to try to get things wrapped up uh, in an efficient manner. And so, yeah, everybody was really great about getting us the information we needed and answering our questions, so we really appreciate that. Um, for the presentation, I was just gonna go through uh, some uh, required communications that uh, our standards require us to share with you, and then Laura was gonna jump in and she was gonna give you some financial highlights and then go through the management letter. So I'll try uh, not to bore you too much with this stuff. It's a little dry, but uh, <laughs> I can get through this pretty quick. Um, as the auditors, we're responsible for planning and performing the audit to obtain reasonable assurance that the financial statements are fairly stated in all material respects. Management is responsible for the selection and use of significant accounting policies. The si significant accounting policies selected by management can be found in note one to the financial statements. There were new, no new financial policies that were adopted during the year, and the application of existing policies was not changed. Accounting estimates are an integral part in the uh, preparation of the financial statements, and they're based on management's knowledge and um, experience with current and uh, existing events, and then they're also based on uh, assumptions about future events. We reviewed the uh, underlying assumptions that went into developing those estimates. We found those to be reasonable in relation to the financial statements as a whole. Difficulties encountered uh, in dealing with management. Happy to report that we had no such difficulties <laughs> in dealing with management. As I mentioned, they were you know, very pleasant to work with and very willing to uh, help us and get us all the information that we needed. And like I said, that was very much appreciated. Uh, audit adjustments, our professional standards define an audit adjustment as a, uh, a proposed correction of the financial statements that may or may not have been detected except through our auditing procedures. And again, happy to report that there were no such audit adjustments that we needed to propose. So what that means is that based on all of our testing, we didn't find errors in your reports. And sometimes we do, but um, your books and records were in very good shape and uh, we didn't have any issues that we came across but we felt like that was something that we needed to propose an entry to fix. So that's a really good sign. Um, on that note, there is an adjustment that's um, in your financial statements and uh, 
my understanding is that this has been discussed with the board in the prior year. It relates to your cash variance. And I think that you had agreed that um, once your uh, reconciliation procedures were put in place and you felt confident that the reconciliations were happening every month as they should be and the cash was being fully uh, reconciled, that you were comfortable writing off this, uh, this error that had been hanging around for quite a while and correcting that. And so on page 63 of the financial statements, you'll see note 15 where that's laid out for you. You can see the impact of that. Uh, but that's really the only adjustment and that's not one that really falls under the category of what I was talking about. And the uh, last thing here is uh, talks about disagreements with management. And our standards define a uh, disagreement with management as a matter whether or not um, resolved to our satisfaction concerning accounting, reporting, or auditing matters that could be uh, significant or material to the auditor's report. And again, I'm pleased to uh, let you know that no such disagreements occurred with management during the course of the audit. And so those are the uh, required communications. If anybody has any questions about those, I'm happy to take them, or otherwise Laura can uh, jump into the uh, financial highlights. Do we, do we have any questions? Uh, it sounds like, uh, sounds like our, our town accountant is doing a great job. Yeah, I mean, one other thing that I didn't mention is uh, for the year-end field work, uh, we came in at the end of December or mid-December. Yep. And the, uh, the financial statements were actually issued in the beginning of, um, of January. So that was a very quick turnaround. And that actually is a very strong indication that your books are in very good shape, that your internal controls are in really good shape, that your cash is being reconciled every month that your receivables are being reconciled every month, uh, that your controls are working the way they're designed, because if that didn't happen, there is no way that we could come in here and issue financial statements like you know, two to four weeks after doing the field work. Your books really have to be in good shape. So that's something that I, you just reminded me that I wanted to mention. So thank you for bringing that up. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that's a positive thing. Now, did, she, did she pay you to say that? No, nope. <laughs> I wouldn't say if it, was, if oh, okay. it wasn't true. <laughs> I knew that. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other for questions? We go to the management letter. Okay, go on. Thank you. So I'm just going to, hi, I'm Laura Stone. I was the director on the audit. I've actually been on your town's audit for a number of years now, so I'm not sure if you remember me from last year, but um, I just want to start off by thanking Rebecca, Ellen, Michelle. Michelle here, but Rebecca and Ellen for um, just another smooth audit. This audit gets better and better every year, faster and faster every year. Um, they really do a great job, like Frank said, of putting everything together in a really nice package for us. We're able to come in, look through the information, and get you know get all the items turned around in a fairly quickly amount of time. So again, thank you to Ellen and Rebecca for for their cooperation during this process. So I'm just going to go over a quick high-level view of the financial statements. Some you know, some larger numbers that I just wanted to touch upon. But if you have any questions, feel free to stop me and I can go through in further detail, anything like that. But I'm just going to do kind of a high level review and then we'll kind of talk about the management letter, which gets shorter and shorter every year, which is a good thing. Um, so the first couple pages, that is our audit opinion. So it's an unmodified audit opinion that starts on page one. That's a clean opinion. That's the best opinion you can get on the financial statements. Again, like Frank said, it means we didn't have any adjustments, nothing material, nothing significant to note, no issues, unmodified, clean opinion. So those are the first couple of pages there. Page five is your management's discussion and analysis that kind of talks about an overview of what happened throughout the year, large increases, decreases, some significant balances. And then your actual financial statements start on page 15. Those are your entity-wide financial statements that includes your long-term liabilities, notably your pension liability, your other post-employment benefit liability, debt, and capital assets. Those are the larger items on, those, on the, that balance sheet on the page 15, which is your entity-wide statements. Again, pension, OPEB, or your other post-employment benefit liabilities, those are the big ticket items that everybody likes to talk about. Um, your net pension liability was $10.1 million, and your net other post-employment benefit liability was $5.5 million. We'll talk more about the trends of those back in the, um, in the back of the financial statements. There's some required supplementary information schedules that give a real good 10-year trend schedule that shows kind of the um, increases and decreases of those liabilities. 
There was no new debt in the current year, so debt was 2.7 million in governmental funds and 2.8 million in the enterprise funds. Nothing new issued this year, so the only changes in your debt was the scheduled principal payments over the, the last fiscal year. Your net position in the governmental activities increased about $1.5 million, and that mainly relates to a lot of capital grants that you received in the current year. There were some uh, completed streets, public works capital grants that was able to be received by the town. Those costs offset were capitalized, which is why it is a direct net increase to your net position. And then going through the fund-based financial statements, you have some major funds, the general fund, the community preservation fund, and then the COVID-19 fund. So I just want to talk about the COVID-19 fund. That's where your, we'll call it ARPA, which is the American Rescue Plan Act funds were received. The town received 2.1 million. That was the allotment. A portion of that was related to Essex, the county, and then a portion of that was directly related to the municipality. Because Essex is a defunct county, you actually received those payments directly, which was 1.3 of the $2.1 million allotment. The town spent 860000 of that last year, 400000 of that this year. So you have about 796000 left to spend in your ARPA funds. Those have to be obligated by the end of this calendar year. Your proprietary funds, so you have um, some business type activities, water, sewer, and your electric light department. We do not audit the electric light department. That's audited by another CPA firm, and we actually um, take those financial statements and, and put them into the town's financial statements. Nothing really significant with your enterprise funds. Everything was pretty much consistent with the prior year. And then flipping to the fiduciary funds, which is mainly the other post-employment benefit trust fund. And those are the assets that are set aside to offset the total other post-employment benefit liability. And the town has about $1.1 million set aside in the other post-employment benefit trust. And that does include the electric light department, which is further broken out in the, in the footnotes to the financial statements. And then lastly, just go into the uh, required supplementary information schedule. So these are the 10-year trend schedules, talking about that pension liability and the other post-employment benefit liability, those big liabilities that everybody kind of has questions on and talks about. The pension liability went up about $2 million this year. That strictly relates to the Essex Regional Retirement System, where it is measured as of December 31st and the market was not as, as kind on December 31st, so that means that the investment losses from Essex actually increased your liability that year. The next schedules are your other post-employment benefit plan schedules, and these are the ones that I really wanted to talk about because the town is doing a really good job of funding this other post-employment benefit liability. Uh, over the past number of years, the town has contributed $85,000 and the electric light department has contributed about $70,000 this past year. So that balance has actually increased in your trust fund, so the assets set aside to offset the total liability, $600,000 since 2017. So that's a, that's a good funding schedule. You're on track. You have a consistent funding of that liability and that's just helping you offset those, that total OPEB liability. And then the only other thing I did want to talk about because it was a it was a good year is in your general fund on page 66 that's your budget to actual schedule and total revenues were over what was estimated by about 300,000 and then total expenditures were under by about 300,000 so those are positive budgetary results so that's a it's a good indicator of the town's um, good year that they've had and that's it for the financial statements I know that was a quick overview um, but if you have any questions or want me to go into anything in further detail, other, otherwise I'll jump into the management letter. Uh, I don't have any questions. No questions? All right. <laughs> we'll keep going. So the management letter. So the town's management letter has been getting smaller and smaller every year, which is great. This is just a letter of some recommendations that we've come across as part of our audit. Uh, the first one, the first question and the first comment in here is related to those bank reconciliations. As Frank has said, the town elected to write off that cash variance that has been carried forward for a number of years. The town's cash was reconciled as of June 30th. 
um, and there was good reconciliation procedures put in place. So that comment is completely resolved. Um, so that is, that is great news. The next comment is related to the fraud risk assessment. So this comment's been in there for a little bit of time, but Ellen actually after year end, she has started a process for doing a fraud risk assessment or implementing a process related to fraud risk assessments at each of the departments. So she started working on that already. So that comment hopefully next year will be completely resolved as well. And then the next comment is related to the documentation of internal controls. And this mainly relates to federal grants. So uh, it's required that the town document any internal controls related to the administering of federal grants, um, state grants as well, but mainly for federal grants. But the town has a draft. She's, uh, Ellen is working on that draft. She's going through it. She's probably, you know, good way through it, but um, that also hopefully will be resolved next year. So the town is making really good headway on some of these comments and hopefully next year these will all be resolved. And we don't have any new comments. Again, it was a very, very smooth audit. Nothing that came to our attention that we've required to be communicating to you in writing. So there's no new comments in the current year. So very clean, another great year, another great audit. And that's all I have. <laughs> that's all I have if everybody has any questions about the management letter. Well, I noticed the management letter is going down and down. And what down is that, and three down. pages long? Yep. Four pages. Down and down. Like I said, every year this audit gets just smoother and smoother. I'm all set. Mark, do you have anything? No, I'm all set. Thank you very much. Great. Um, I just want to say um, this is a really good audit report, and um, it comes on the heels of some, I know, really difficult work internally um, for the reconciliation, especially because it, it's been forever there. As long as I've lived in town, I don't <laughs> think we've been able to reconcile. I've never quite understood it, but... Um, knock on something wood and it appears that with the expertise in house right now this long-standing problem has now been successfully resolved and that's that's a huge step for the town to not have that hanging over us um, um, because that was the reason we changed our form of government and went to a finance director and then to a town administrator because over time we just didn't have the right kind of um, employees qualified highly enough to to do this type of work and uh, I want to thank the entire financial team because um, I take I know it takes everybody working together and it's clear to me that we have we have some really great employees right now working in our financial side and we want to hold on to them so we want to thank them publicly and hope everybody who's watching understands that this is a really great audit report and a lot of good information for us too so I'm not going to pretend that I understand everything <laughs> in it because I don't. I'm not an accountant. But I understand enough to know that this is telling us a lot about our town and telling us that our town is in really good shape financially and uh, the finances are secure. So thank you so very much for coming in and walking us through it. Thank you very much. You. You're welcome. Let us know if you have any questions. Thanks, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Pleasure. Thanks, you too. Thanks for staying, Ellen. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, and next, I'm going to turn over the chair to Good Jason. Um, what? Oh, the town report. I'm so sorry. No, no, the, uh, no, no, no. I'm way ahead. Wait, number seven. Ratify the collective bargaining agreement. Oh, yes. For the New England Benef Benevolent Association Local Number 113, Groveland Fire and Police Signal Operators. I understand this is our dispatchers. I didn't know they had such a long, complicated name. <laughs> so has everybody had a chance to review the agreement? I think um, our town administrator, I'm going to ask our town administrator who negotiated to run us through it. Thank you. So um, this particular union has um, opted for a one-year extension for the last three years. So we have not had an opportunity to uh, fully go through the agreement in greater detail until recently. 
Uh, there's been a lot of change uh, or, and staff and turnover in that particular department. Um, but we were able to meet with them this year. Um, they came forward with some requests. Uh, one of the larger requests would be the creation of a supervisor role. That is currently something that we do not have in our department, and it is something that is in a lot of the other uh, dispatch departments and other communities. Um, so this will allow an individual who will essentially supervise the department and plays a, a greater role in training and additional duties. Um, so we're really excited that that's something that both, you know, the union would like to see and the town thinks is a great idea in terms of providing a more formal uh, and efficient structure within the department. Um, there were some other requests that were not necessarily um, things that the town wanted to proceed with based upon some financial issues, but some of the other ones were just really, you know, pretty routine um, such as, you know, adding Juneteenth to the holiday section within the agreement um, and adding a couple of those uh, smaller items that had not been updated. Uh, additionally, there were some references to our personnel policies that were in place and we had just updated those in January. So we took an opportunity to update those as part of the agreement as well. Um, so there was those updates that were made. And then lastly, there was a request in terms of increasing the wages. So you'll see that we now created the new structure and we have the one to three years, the three plus years, and then the supervisor's role. Um, so we propose the rates for the one to three years to be effective as of July 1st, 2024, $28.37. And then for three plus years, it would be $30.35. And then the supervisor's role would be the 31 to 26. And then those would increase in FY26 to 2894, 3096, 3189. And then in FY27, it would be 2952, 3158, and 3252. Uh, in terms of a monetary impact to the overall budget, this is one of the uh, benefits of a 911 grant that we receive annually. Uh, those wages are offset by that grant. Um, so there's only a small portion that we must commit in terms of our operating funds to these positions. Um, and I think that it's definitely long overdue as these employees have not seen an increase um, in the last three years. Do we have any questions? No. Okay, do you want to make a motion to approve it? I'll make a motion to approve the, the new uh, negotiated um, union agreement. Full motion. Full motion. All right, I'll second that. Okay, <laughs> as presented, yes. Okay, any further discussion? No, nope. all in favor? It's unanimous. You just have a little space issue there. If it matters. Yes, there's also on that last page it says 2020 and it needs to be updated to 2024. Oh, yep. So just before I have you sign it, I'll, I'll make sure that those two clerical errors are updated. Yep, great. Thanks. Okay, so we've now ratified and approved that. Two. Um, oh, the town report draft for 2023. Uh, thank you. So I took the liberty of assembling the town report on behalf of the Board of Selectmen for uh, 2023. We are required by law to have that um, completed prior to the annual town meeting. Uh, if it is not provided, there is a fine of $20 to the Board of Selectmen uh, for failure to comply with the law. Um, so I was very eager to get it accomplished. Uh, there is not much to it. We use ClearGov this year instead of going through the process of putting it together. The last few years we've just had individual departments put together letters and we've just assembled it in one large document and put it into the town report um it wasn't necessarily something fun to read but it's a you know a historic document and it's a you know a matter of record that we have it um so last fiscal year for the 2022 report i tried to take a different approach and add some photos and some color and add some information about grants and projects that we were working on and kind of take a, a more uniform type of approach in terms of the format uh, and making it a little bit more of a comprehensive document. 
Uh, I really am very proud of the document we produced for 2022, but it was a huge undertaking and it was a lot of work to take the information that uh, departments had provided and then try and put it into a Word document and format whatnot, and I did that myself. So this year we used ClearGov, um, so departments were able to upload the information into the platform that we use for our budget books. Um, so that takes care of a lot of the formatting issues. Um, and then it also, again, gives departments more ownership over what information that they're sharing with um, the public as the town report. Um, so that was made available to you electronically um, in the packet that I had sent out to you because it's a little larger. Uh, there were two departments who had not submitted their information. They have since submitted their information. Um, so I wanted to make sure that the board had a chance to review that and I can send out the updated report with those two department informations, two departments and their information so that uh, the board has a chance to review finally before um, approving and allowing me to get um, it over to the printers for printing some of the copies for town meeting and making it available to residents uh, remotely on our website uh, moving forward. So we'll have it on the agenda one more time? That's correct. Okay, do we have any comments um, at this time on the draft? Yes? Um, even though you said there, there was a lot less to it, it's just because of the way that you had it done. I mean, it's, it's a tremendous amount of information work, and it's very well put together. All, what, 80, 85, 87 pages? So it's a small it's a, document. Yeah. <laughs> It's very robust, and it's going to grow since there's more to be added to it. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work, and it's great information, and it's extremely well put together. Anyone else? Okay, so we'll wait for the final draft. Yes. Okay, great. And if anybody looks through it and sees anything or has a question, we know where you are. Please let me know. Okay, thanks so much. Okay, so now we're on to the part of the agenda that the mayor of Newburyport wants to form a Whittier task force and as I'm an employee of the Whittier Regional Vortec High School I'm going to recuse myself from the discussion and turn it over for Jason. Uh, is there anybody that wants to be a part of this or anybody that wants to wait until Dan gets back to make that decision? Um, I, I just have a question on this. It says uh, March 4th or 2. My force on Monday. Yeah. Yes. Is it is it actually the Monday or is it actually or, or is the uh, March the wrong date? Uh, it's on the it's this it's uh, six. Excuse me. So it it should be instead of saying March fourth, it should be March sixth. March sixth. But we will not meet prior to this meeting. So we can't wait. What's that? Just anybody? We can't wait for. Yeah, yeah, I can. I, uh, is that something that you want to do? Yeah, yeah, I can do it. So, Mark, you want to make a motion for? I'll make a motion to uh, point Ed to the. Uh, unless you unless you want to wait till Dan comes back. Can't. Can't. Okay. To the Woodier Task Force. I'll second that. All in favor? <laughs> Stain. <Yeah. laughs> Done. Back over to you. Thank you, Jason. Um, so next on the agenda, we have the resignation of Don Stokes um, from the planning board member. And he thanks the town for allowing him to serve. And um, I thank John Stokes for all of his services to the town. He's done a lot for our town, and uh, it's a big loss on the planning board, so we need someone to step up for that position. And I'll need a motion to accept the resignation. I'll make a motion to accept the resignation of John Stokes from the planning board. I'll Any further discussion? Yeah, uh, uh, John did a great job on the board. Uh, on the, uh, on the board. Uh, he was a long-time member, uh, fairly long-time member, seems like it. Uh, he did a good job, and uh, I'm, I'm sure he's going to be missed. You had a lot of expertise. Okay, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? With regret? Yep. Accept the resignation of John Stokes. It's unanimous. 
Next on the agenda is to accept the resignation of Joseph, Mc, Joseph McMahons as a police officer effective February 14th, 2024. So it's prior to this meeting that would backdate in. That's correct? Yes, they resigned. Okay. No motion to accept. Second. Any discussion? There be none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Yep. It's unanimous. We also need to accept the resignation of Cynthia Batista as dispatcher, effective February 14th, 2024. Uh, question. After, after motion. I'll make a motion to accept it. Second. Okay, and question. The question. In the resignation letter, uh, she resigned February 20th, but in, a, in our uh, oh. agenda, February 14th, uh, uh, which is it? Well, let me see. I just looked at those letters. My apologies. You're correct. It says the, um, the February 14th was for Officer McMains and February 20th was for Cynthia Batista. Okay. So we'll amend, change that agenda line to say February 20th. Can we amend that motion? Friendly amendment? Amended. Okay. I wish you well in the retirement. We all do. Okay, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Yep. Thank you. Okay. And for lots of pages here. Just one second. Okay, so um, next we have Board of Selectmen Minutes for January 2nd, 2024. Anybody have a chance to review those? Make a motion to approve them. I'll make a motion to approve the Board of Selectmen meeting minutes January 2nd, 2024. Second that. Okay. Um, any discussion? Second. Okay. All in favor? Yep. It's unanimous. Okay. Um, under the unfinished business, um, we have the reminder of the upcoming election um, and open seats. But our, there's the, the primary is what, May, March 5, right? March 5th. March 5th is the primary. I assume it's the regular voting hours, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m.? Usually it is. I'm That's sure. our usual voting hours, I think. And then our town election is not until um, the first Monday in May. And so we're still waiting for all those seats to get filled up. And now we're at to town administrators time. What you got? Thank you. So I just wanted to give two small updates. One is to let the board know that I will be attending the Massachusetts Municipal Association Legislative Breakfast on Friday. Um, so I might have some updates to share with the board in terms of any of the state actions that will be uh, put forward. I know the governor released her budget, but we have not yet to see what the House the Senate and or conference have, have uh, put forward. Obviously, it will be uh, some time before we have those final numbers. And then I also wanted to inform the board that we still are working with the finance board in terms of coming up with the budget for fiscal year 25. Uh, the board is still currently meeting with the departments. Um, they have a meeting scheduled on Wednesday. Uh, at this meeting, they have also requested the presence of both the Whittier superintendent to go over their budget, as well as the uh, superintendent from the Pawtucket Regional School District to go over um, his budget. Um, that is also being presented at the school committee meeting tomorrow evening, uh, which you all have an invitation for in your correspondence. That was the meeting that was rescheduled due to the horrendous snowstorm that we had that evening. Um, <laughs> so hopefully once we have those number is more finalized we will be able to bring that information before the board of selectmen i would like to make sure that the next two meetings in march we are able to focus mo more so on that than anything else so that we can wrap up everything uh, by the end of the month and get a finalized warrant over to the town clerk uh, so that we can get it posted in the time uh, allotted uh, to meet those requirements um, additionally um, we will also be looking to um, have a public hearing for the laying out of Billis Way. So that is something that will also be on your agenda. Uh, I believe that we're gonna try and put that on for the next meeting, which would be 
March 11th. If you remember the process from some of our others, once the, you know, the, the road is proposed for acceptance, it first needs to be approved by the Board of Selectmen for laying out, and then it needs to actually be accepted by an act of town meeting. Um, so this is just one part in that process. Uh, the neighbors or the neighborhood is very excited about this as they have not been receiving services on that road currently as it is private way and it is essentially owned by the developer. So this process will give access uh, as a public way. It will also add to our road miles. Um, not a lot of road miles, but any bit helps. Um, so uh, I would hope that on at that meeting we'll be able to move forward with that as well as maybe potentially either look at some of the proposed warrant articles. Mm -hmm. um, I have a draft right now, but we're still going through with town council to finalize the language in some of those, so I don't really have a final version. So I'm not 100% confident that I'll have something to share with you until March 25th, unfortunately. Um, but I will try and get as much information over to you so that you can at least review it um, prior to the meeting, even if it's in between those weeks, so that you do have enough time to really kind of get involved in the information that we discuss at that meeting because the turnaround time afterwards is not very long. So we'll have our next meeting on March 11th, then we'll have our following meeting on March 25th, and then we'll have our another, our last meeting, well, our last meeting before town meeting on April 8th. So we need to get the agenda, excuse me, the warrant posted 14 days prior to that meeting. So we might need to call a special meeting, which we've done in the past if we need to and time doesn't uh, afford us the opportunity to look at things in more detail, but um, we really don't have that many more meetings until we you know, post a warrant and move forward. So we'll have to see exactly how things plan out, but just a quick update. So can members of the board, they can look under the finance board, I think is the digital budget book Yes, on the so town website. So if you go under finance board, I was looking for it, I couldn't find it, and then I didn't know it was under finance board. So it's under the finance board title, and then you can look through and see what people are. And that saying. was requested. So the the budget book underneath the finance board right now is what was requested. Okay. Then the finance board, once they finalize it, will be the finance board recommended, and yeah. then it will be finalized. So there'll right. be three different versions that the the people will be able to look at. That's not confusing. No. <laughs> it's great. No, but I mean, in case somebody wants to just take a, a run through it before our next meeting um, to see if there's anything in there that jumps out at you. Okay. Um, now it's Selectman's time and reports. Ed, do you have anything? Nothing. Mark? Nothing. I, I'm a Mark. <laughs> Are you answering for Mark? Or is it uh, <laughs> no. Um. <laughs> I'm confused. That's okay. No more, sir. Okay, thank you. I uh, just want to uh, say thank you to the uh, Groveland Fire Department for the uh, the um, ceremony they put on t Tuesday night for uh, Lieutenant Al Credit and uh, Firefighter Tracy Guilford. They did a really nice presentation. It was uh, quite a turnout. Yes. Very happy to see that. Yeah, I'd like to echo that. It was uh, very touching. Uh, was uh, very uh, in touch with everybody and everything that was going on there. So it was entertaining. It was, it was very nice <laughs> to see. He did mention that he drove one of our fire trucks. Yes, and started a fire with a yeah. cigar. So. He did, but that was when we were starting fires down at the Pines Recreation. It was uh, because very very nice. We I really doing appreciated that. it. <laughs> You know, the bonfire days. Those are gone by. We're not allowed to do that anymore, I think. We don't have a safe place to build that big a fire, but it was really nice. Um, I am going to go to the school meeting tomorrow night that was postponed due to the huge snowstorm that we got buried under. <laughs> um, and I'm just um, kind of perplexed and concerned. Um, I'm perplexed because at the prior meeting that I was at where they did a presentation on their different departments and the regional advisory, um, we were told that they felt this budget would be within our means and okay. They said they would be okay. Um, and whether or not you've read that, they're saying it's a 4% increase. That's not the operating increase. The operating increase is more in the line of 8%. 
So the debt service is going down. That's what's causing the budget itself to only be 4%. The problem for us is the operating increase of 8% is too much. It's just too much. Um, and I know that um, speaking you know, with individuals that are on the Merrimack side of the fence, they're equally concerned um, about this. And I know that um, our town administrator, Rebecca, works very closely with the town manager from West Newbury and the finance manager from Merrimack. And I know they are working really hard to try and find a way to bring this budget in um, so that we can fit it into our budget. Um, but I'm concerned because over the last several months, we've brought to you several um, errors on our assessment. Um, you know, I found one, I kind of tripped over it, I wasn't looking for it, and Rebecca, Rebecca brought it forward and indeed was an error. And then in looking at it further, Rebecca came forward with another thing that again, um, was apparent to the naked eye. Both of these errors were not, not there if you're someone that works on these documents. Um, and it concerns me about the check and balance because I don't feel that I can be the check and balance for that $52 million budget. I thought that that was the job of others, you know, from the superintendent to the business office to the school committee. I mean, we all look over all the town budgets. The finance board sits there. We all go through all these. We check that they add up before we bring them to town meeting. Um, I'm very concerned that this has been lost in, in the budget process, the check and balance part of it. Uh, and it makes me feel um, that I don't trust the whole number yet until I know for sure where that total comes from and that somebody has actually checked it and can answer the questions about the numbers that are in it. So I have far more questions than answers at this point, and that's very, very concerning as we're getting very close, as our town administrator said, to when we have to post a warrant. We're going to have to deal with this somehow. And I will continue to work, and I know the board members support me in my work with the Regional Advisory Committee to make sure that these checks and balances are put back into the regional agreement and that there are um, discussions when they change how to count the number of students um, because a third possible issue is going to be the fact that they are counting the preschool students who pay tuition as part of the enrollment and those are tuition students which the state does not count tuition students because they're already paying. You know, so we've got a big hill to climb here. Um, but I think the three towns are working together well and I, I think we have the best possible staff here with our town administrator. So at least I have confidence in that side of things. Thank you for listening. We have some correspondence. Um, the invitation to the meeting, that is tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. And a letter from Megan Pekana, Pekan Pekanko, <laughs> probably butchering, I'm so sorry, Megan, um, regarding the La Langley Adams Library. It's in our correspondence. And I really apologize if I merely mispronounced your name. So our next meeting is going to be on a Monday, March 11th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, in our mailboxes, we have for the Friends of Easy Memorial Park, an indoor flea market fundraiser wow. for Saturday, March 23rd, 2024. The commission is free. It'll be from 8 to 2 p.m. Okay. Everybody's welcome. Thanks. Anything else? Motion will adjourn. Yep. Go ahead and make the motion. You did? Second it? All right. All in favor of adjourning. Thank you very much. <laughs>